Okay, so one of the things we talk about when we do equations is you always want to know this infamous question, uh, how many solutions will my equation have? So well, the reason this came about is because we wanted to uh, introduce this thing called predictive analysis. So when I look at my information, I study it. The first thing any true researcher does is they take a look at their information and they look for clues to give you starting points. So one of the things that we begin to look at, okay, is that in an equation, I can predict how many solutions there are going to be once I get each side of the equation into y equals mx plus b. So with that being said, so we're just going to talk about linear types of equations. I'm not talking about quadratics. I'm not talking about anything crazy. I'm talking about the beginning of algebra and the very basic equations that we begin to solve. So if you've noticed in algebra one, every time you solve an equation, you either have x's and a number on one side, and then the other side you have some x's, or you don't have x's and a number on the other side. So if I don't have x's, then I have zero x's. If I do have some x's, I have a number. Uh, if I just have a number, that's my b. If I don't have a number, then my b is zero. So example of what I mean by this. So say I have this equation. It says 3 times 2x plus 4 equals 5x plus 1. Okay. Well, I begin to look at this, and the question is, before I even do this, am I going to have an answer? Am I going to find an actual answer? Because that's important because one of the things that a lot of people, uh, when we first learn to solve equations, get held up on is the idea of zero. And we need to understand zero is a number. It's a number that can be found on the number line. So before I do anything, the goal is to, one, to be able to determine how many solutions I have. And here's the key things we need to know. If there's going to be an answer, when I get both sides reduced into this mx plus b, okay, the coefficient, the number of x's, will not be the same on both sides. That means there's always going to be an answer. So if I have 5 on one side, 8 on the other, there's one answer. If I have 2 on one side, a negative 3 on the other side, there's only one answer. So I might start a problem out in this particular form. The goal is to put each side into mx plus b, so we to, are to reduce and simplify each side as much as we can. So I start this one with something called the distributive property. So the distributive property states that I multiply each term inside the parentheses by the multiplier. So 3 times 2x uh, is 6x, 3 times 4 is 12 equals 5x plus 1. With this example, I am now done. The answer to this one is there is going to be one solution. And that's all this video is capturing, is how many solutions will there be? Will there be one, none, or infinite? Because those are the only three options you have that have solving the equation that you could particularly get. So notice, how did I know that there was one? There were six x's, there were five x's. They are not the same amount of x's. So the answer is one automatically. And I, if I want to, I can go ahead and calculate it. But for the purpose of this video, I am not calculating. I am literally just determining how many solutions I would have. So we go on. So now I come up with another one. Another question might say, OK, what if I have 4x plus 2 minus x equals 3 times x plus 4? So for this now, OK, the next type of possibility we could have is none. And the thing we need to know about none is the, what happens when it's a none. Well, in none, our rate of change is, so the number of x's on both sides is the same. However, the number they are adding or subtracting are different. So, for instance, one side might have 5x's, the other side might have 5x's. Well, my x's are the same on both sides. If one is adding 3 and the other side is not adding 3, then there is always going to be no solution. It is that basic concept that we need to understand. So. Here's an example. So I have 4x plus 2 minus x. Notice it's not in just some amount of x's. I need to combine like terms. So I do 4x plus 2 minus x when my like terms are the x's. So this becomes 3x plus 2 equals 3x. So I do the distributive property, 3x plus 12. Now, why is this? I know the answer is no solution. So there is no answers to this. Because if we again notice that the x's are the same, but the b's are different, and that's what we have to note, and that's what we have to look for. So if my m's are the same, but my b's are different, the answer is always, always, always no solution. So on to the next one. 
So the last possibility that we could have is infinitely many solutions. Infinitely many solutions is the easiest one to recognize because what is on the left is going to be identically on the right, therefore infinite. However, they might start off differently. So if I have this thing of 2 times x plus 4 equals uh, 5x um, plus 8 um, minus uh, 3x. So there's my problem. So I must, again, get both sides into mx plus b. This is the important part of this. So when I go ahead, I've got to distribute it here. And I've got 2x plus 8 equals Combine like terms, I get 2x plus 8. What we notice is that not only are the m's the same, 2x and 2x, so not only are the x's the identical, however, but the 8's are also identical. Therefore, infinitely many solutions, because these are the same exact thing on both sides, which states that any number I plug in for x will give me the same number here that it would calculate over here. Hence why infinitely many. Now. How could we apply some things to this? How could I make this a more depth of knowledge question? So some of the questions that could be asked, again, are here. So let's say I have this um, 4 times x plus 3, and I say it equals this uh, ax plus b. So I make it equal to this other equation. Some things I can ask you is say, hey, if I want to have something with infinitely many solutions, so I want it to be infinite, the minute I hear infinite, I know that a must be equal, okay? I know that my number of x's must be equal on both sides, and I know my numbers that I'm adding or subtracting must be identical on both sides. So, first things first, we take this side and we go ahead and simplify it into 4x plus 12 equals ax plus b, okay? If you want to think of this as mx plus b, all right, okay, so it doesn't matter what they have, they're gonna maybe write some coefficient and some number, okay? I know if I want infinite, that m has to be four and b has to be 12. Hence the infinite, m's are the same, b's are the same. There's my m, so my m must also be four. There's my um, 12, so my b must also be 12. However, I can put any coefficient here, I can make an a, therefore I can say my a has to equal four on the right-hand side. If I want it to be no solution, I don't change the a. The a stays the same. It's a 4, 4. But the b must become any number on the planet Earth besides plus 12. 12.1 will make this be no solution because it is not 12. You could pick 12.00000001 and it's no solution as long as it is not the number 12 you will get no solution and you will be okay. If I want it to be one solution, I can pick anything I want in the world for the B. So B could be 12, but A cannot be four. It can be any number on the planet Earth besides four. 4.1, negative 300, it doesn't matter as long as it does not say 4.0. So this could be 3.9. You can make any number up that you want. And that is literally just checking. Can you determine from there one solution, none solution, infinitely many solutions? It's just working your way backwards, giving you an equation, and then asking you to create the numbers to make it so that it's none, make it so that it's infinite, or make it so that it's one. And those are the only questions that, they can, that can be asked of this particular question on a keystone level type question.